Hey dudes, to the Builder here, and in this episode of Zig Master, we're going to be taking a look at another data structure implementation in Zig. This time the data structure is called a try. It's spelled T-R-I-E. And a try is usually used for efficient storage and uh, lookup operations when dealing with strings. Um, and in Zig, a string, as you may recall, is just a slice of bytes. So that's how we're, we're going to be dealing with this uh, in this implement, implementation. Once again, this is a fairly simple implementation of a try. Uh, you will find uh, other implementations that are much more robust, uh, deal with edge cases and um, even better um, strategies in terms of storage. But for the purpose of uh, expanding our knowledge of how to deal with uh, allocation and freeing up resources, it's a good example because it the try is a recursive data structure and 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 when we're dealing with allocations and uh, recursion um, things can get complicated real fast but as you will see uh, the the tools that zig uh, provides will make this pretty pretty straightforward the first thing that we're going to be doing is with the, we're declaring here this uh, name called node map and it's basically just an alias for the type of map that we're going to be using. We're going to be using an auto hash map from the standard library. The key type is a byte, a U8, and the value type is going to be node. And node is this data structure right here. This is basically a, a um, an internal data structure within our try. Um, as you can see, we are um, this this file is the try struct itself. It's called try.zig. Um, and uh, this node type is declared within that container type of our try. And uh, this is uh, the, the actual recursive part of this data structure because uh, a node will have this terminal field uh, that, that's basically a flag that determines if, if this is the last character in a string and the children field is basically our node map, okay? And as we saw up here, our node map has uh, itself, the value type is a node. So nodes have children in the form of a node map, which in turn, the values are nodes. And, and that's where we have that recursive nature of this data structure. Um, here, we need to initialize our map um, so we have an init method that takes an allocator and in that init method what we're going to be doing is initializing that children uh, field with a new node map we're calling its init method in turn here and passing that allocator uh, onto the map um, as you can see here we, we are providing a default value for the terminal uh, field so we don't have to specifically uh, explicitly specify that field here Next up, we have here the dinit method, and uh, here is uh, one of the important parts of this data structure is that we can see how being a recursive data structure, we have to indeed recurse down this uh, uh, structure of nodes uh, to actually free all of the resources that we're using. And we're going to be doing that. We are uh, calling here the value iterator method of the, the hash map. And this will return an iterator over the values of the map, which are our nodes. And for each one, uh, we capture the node here and then we call its the init method. Okay. So this is indeed the recursive part of the, uh, the init method of node. And finally, once we do that, um, we can call the init on the map of this node uh, on which we called the init originally. Okay. And with that, we would be freeing up the resources, uh, the resources of this node and all of its children and all of the children of the children and so on and so forth. Now we have uh, the fields of the try itself. We just have an allocator. And the root, which is going to be the first node in this data structure. Here we're defining uh, this constant called try, so we can re refer to it in our methods. And here we have the init function for the try itself. We're going to be taking an allocator. 
we're setting that allocator field here with that allocator that we're being passed in. And we're also initializing our root node here with that allocator also. And then we return this uh, try uh, struct. Um, next up, we can look at the deinit method. And for the try itself, it's going to be real simple because we're doing all the work at the, at the node level in the deinit method of the nodes. So we just call deinit on, on that first node and it will handle um, all of that uh, descending tree-like structure of nodes uh, recursively descending through all of those children and calling the init on all of those nodes. Okay. Here, um, we have, uh, basically the heart of the try, which is the insert method. We're going to be receiving a string here, as you can see, a slice of const u8. And uh, what we're going to be doing is, once again, we're going to be uh, using a recursive algorithm here. We're, start, we're setting this node variable to a pointer, um, and we're going to start out with our root node. And here, what we're going to be doing is, we're going to be going uh, through each of the bytes of that string that's passed in. And we need here uh, this range for an index. The first thing that we're going to be doing, we're going to be calling um, on uh, the children map, which is our map, as you may remember, this get or put method and passing in the current byte that we're working on. And uh, get or put is a really useful method in, in the, the auto hash map because what it does is, is it, if there exists an entry for the given key, it will return that entry. Uh, and if, if there is no entry, it will create a new entry. And the entry, uh, uh, this result here, which I'm calling GOP, it's what's known as a getter put result. And that getter put result has a pointer to the key and a pointer to the value. And it has this flag here uh, called found existing. So this, uh, if, if, if this flag isn't true, this means that um, there was no entry, a new one was created, and then we have to initialize uh, the value for that entry, which can be uh, uh, done by setting uh, here the value at what, what's being pointed to by this field, value pointer. So from our GOP value pointer, we are assigning to that location in memory, which has already been allocated by the map, uh, a new node instance we're calling here node init once again with our reference to our allocator and once we do that um, we can then decide is this a terminal um, a node and we know that if our index uh, within the string is it equal to the length minus one which is basically the last character and if so, then we're going to be setting, once again, we already created the node if, if necessary, or we already had a node here in the value pointer. So we're setting this uh, flag field called terminal to true. Okay. And then um, we set here our node variable to uh, the value of that pointer, the value pointer from our get or, uh, get or put result. Uh, which basically will then, for the next character in the string, it will uh, descend uh, down one more level uh, in this uh, tree-like structure of nodes, okay? Um, and with that, that's basically all we need for the insert method. Next up, we have our lookup method. Once again, we're being passed a string, and this time we want to know if this string is contained inside this try. And the algorithm is pretty similar this time. We're selling. We're not. You, we don't need a pointer because we're not going to be mutating anything. We just want to check for the existence of a node. So we start out our, at our uh, root node. Then once again, uh, for each byte in the string, and we are going to be using an index once again. We're going to be uh, calling this time on the children of our node. Uh, we're going to be using uh, the get method of the map with our key, which is the current byte. And this will return a node if there is an entry for that byte in the map. And if so, then we're going to be checking um, if this byte is the last byte uh, of the string, if it's equal to sterling minus one, the index. And 
that node has the terminal flag set to true, then we can return true. Okay. So basically this means that we have reached the end of this string that was passed in and this current node is indeed a terminal. So it matches uh, the, the full string that we're trying to match. Okay. Otherwise we're going to be setting node um, to this, uh, to this node so we will be then descending down that tree like structure and uh, here the else is just a break because if we didn't find this if this get um, uh, didn't actually find within the map uh, of children here of the current node it didn't find this byte and that means that we we have nothing more to do uh, because the, uh, the, this uh, sequence of strings has no further entries uh, further down in this tree-like structure. So here we just break and that would uh, lead us here to this return false. Okay. And with that, uh, as you can see, with pretty much 81 lines of code, we have uh, a, a try implementation uh, which will handle uh, the proper uh, recursive allocations when necessary and also the cleanup when we have to uh, liberate those resources. Now let's go over to our main um, .zig. Here we are importing our try. Okay. And we're going to be using the general purpose allocator. Uh, here um, we're going to be uh, embedding uh, this built-in embed file. Uh, will uh, bring in the contents of this file called alice.txt. This is basically the text of Alice in Wonderland. Um, uh, and it brings it in as a single static string, uh, which will be included as part of the binary. So this uh, embed file uh, includes the contents of a file within the binary, so you can use it as a string right off the bat at compile time. Uh, we're calling this corpus. Then we're creating an iterator, uh, basically a tokenizer. Uh, and we're what the tokenizer does is that it will split uh, into tokens using this uh, scalar value, which is a space in this case. And if they are, if for example, if there are more than one space in a sequence, you, you would normally get uh, in a normal split, you get empty fields. But the, token, the tokenizer handles that for you and it, it will not return any empty fields. Um, so that's why we're using the tokenizer. Here um, we are going to be creating uh, an instance of our try and immediately we are deferring the, the init. So we are ensuring that no matter what happens, either success or error, uh, we will be cleaning up those resources. And if we don't, uh, the GPA will let us know in, in debug mode or in safe mode. Next up, we're going to make a preliminary test here of our try. We're going to be inserting the word caterpillar and the word category. And then we're going to be seeing the result of uh, looking up those words, which should, which should be true for both of them. And we do an extra look up here for the word cat, uh, which is uh, included inside of these words. But the way the try works is that uh, at the, this T character, which is the last one in cat, uh, that node is not a terminal, so it should not match. Okay. Here we're setting up a couple of counters here, a counter of words and a counter of found, uh, which we will be using. We're going to be creating here a little benchmark. Uh, we're setting up a timer. We have in the standard library, this timer struct, we call it start method. Um, here we're going to be first looping to make the insertion of all of the words within that text of, of Alice in Wonderland. We do the insertion and we increment words by one. Here we reset the iterator by setting its index to zero. Now we're going to loop again uh, through all of the words and this time we're going to be doing the lookup. Okay. And if the lookup is true, we, we increment found by one. So at the end, we should have an equal number of words and found because we are just looking up the same words that we inserted. Here, finally, we're going to be printing out our stats and uh, making use here of a multi-line string. So you can see the syntax of a multi-line string. So we can have this formatting uh, of our output, each, each of these on a, on a separate line. And this is a tab here. Um, uh, 
here we have the actual values that we're going to be using for that uh, print. So let's open up here a little pane and let's do a zig build run. And as you can see uh, here, we, we have that caterpillar returned true in the lookup and uh, category is also true and cat returns false. So the try seems to be working correctly. And here, once again, we have the total, we have uh, 13,560 words and 13,560 were found. So that again confirms that the, the try is working. And uh, here we have that in this debug build, this took uh, around 110 milliseconds. Let's uh, run it again. Uh, there you go, 103. Let's do a zig build dash D. Uh, optimize equals release fast. Okay, and now let's run the actual executable here. And as you can see, when we do a release fast, we obtain the same exact results. So it's working correctly. And now it's down to just around 9.9 .9 milliseconds, okay? So that's a pretty big difference when we do a release fast. And uh, that's uh, basically it. That's what I wanted to demonstrate here. One, another, uh, we already saw a stack implementation. Now we saw a try, which uses recursion. And uh, basically, uh, as you can see, given the tools that, that Zig provides, uh, these types of data structures that could be a bit complex to implement in other languages um, doesn't have to be that, that hard when you're dealing with this in Zig. Okay, so I hope you find this useful. Do the builder here. I'll see you in the next one.